Welcome back to those who have joined us uh, after um, being involved in previous On Aging Conversations, and, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Barbara McMillan, Provincial Community Engagement Coordinator for United Way of British Columbia's Healthy Aging Team. And I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional ancestral territories of all First Nations in this land we now call Canada, on which we gratefully work and gather. So after a summer break that seems all too short, we're resuming our On Aging Conversation series, a collaboration between Healthy Aging Corps and Health Age Canada. If you missed earlier episodes, you'll find recordings on Healthy Aging Corps Canada, the national knowledge hub connecting agencies that support and advance independent living for older Canadians. You'll also find the fall lineup of On Aging Speakers on Corps as well as delivered to your inbox if you've signed up for the twice monthly CORE Canada e-news, which we really encourage you to do. In our work with CORE, HealthAge and the extraordinary network of community-based senior serving agencies, volunteers and professionals, we're really privileged to encounter many thought leaders in the field of healthy aging. And so we created this series to help bring some of these ideas, innovations and valuable perspectives to a wider audience. Each 30 minute episode includes a short video that highlights a community based organization that's making a difference in the lives of older Canadians or in some cases, um, older people in other parts of the world. And this is followed by Help Age Canada CEO Gregor Snedden in conversation with our featured guest and a little time for a few questions before we wrap up. And that's it, a 30 minute dose of healthy aging information and inspiration every two weeks. Meanwhile, please feel free to introduce yourself and post questions in the chat box. And now I'll turn it over to Gregor Seddon, CEO of Health Age Canada, your host for On Aging. Thank you very much, Barb, uh, who's calling, by the way, at 10 a.m. from Cold Lake, Alberta, where she is uh, there at uh, a, a, the Men's Sheds Conference. So thanks so much for uh, for 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 hosting us today. It's uh, it's really exciting to be back after the summer. We had a great uh, spring season and I'm really thrilled about our guest today. A little bit about Help Age Canada. Help Age Canada supports community-based initiatives through its partnerships across Canada and abroad to improve the lives of older persons and their communities. We empower older people who are vulnerable, isolated, or lonely by developing innovative programs and collaborations to foster a world in which all persons age with dignity. Um, and we work as an aggregator, as a convener of the community-based senior services sector in Canada, uh, working with our partners from coast to coast to coast, as well as we partner with international organizations and humanitarian work uh, all over the world, including in, in uh, the Horn of Africa, where we have projects operating in Kenya, as well as in Ethiopia. And today we're really thrilled to uh, welcome our guest, Jan Janet Siddall, who's the former co-chair of, of GRAN. And uh, we're going to have a, a little chat with, with her in a few moments. But first we're gonna share a, a short video, about three minutes or so, of, of their work introducing GRAN to, uh, to all of you. So uh, take it away, Aman. Advocacy Grand Style, the Grandmother's Advocacy Network. This is a story of passion, persistence, solidarity, and speaking out. It is a story about older women making a difference. We hope this video will inspire you to join us to do what we can to make the world a better place for all. The Grandmother's Advocacy Network, most often called GRAN, is a dynamic network of older women from across Canada. We support older women and grandmothers in Sub-Saharan Africa. Although vulnerable and poor, these courageous women are raising millions of young people whose parents have died from AIDS. They are fighting for their rights to health, gender equality, education, social protection, and freedom from violence. But their rights are often ignored or denied. Older women and grandmothers in Canada can work with the African grandmothers to promote and protect their human rights and those of the children and young people in their care. Together, 
we can make a difference in the lives of grandmothers and young people in Africa, in the global fight to end HIV AIDS, and in the way that older women are perceived and treated. And this is why I belong to Gran. Gran's advocacy work focuses on four key human rights, health and access to medicines, freedom from violence, education and lifelong learning, and financial and social security. We build public awareness and educate ourselves and others about issues impacting vulnerable older women and children. We influence Canadian and international decision makers on how they make choices, allocate resources, and develop policies and programs that make the most impact. In our advocacy work, we use a variety of methods. We meet with MPs and government officials. We write letters to newspapers, to the Prime Minister and members of the Cabinet, and we ask others in our communities to do the same. We sign petitions, speak up, and rally peacefully to remind governments and the public of the challenges that others face. We hold events in our communities to draw attention to the human rights that are being violated or ignored. GRAN often partners with other like-minded civil society organizations working in Canada and internationally. There's an old African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Well, wow, thank you. That's a very, uh, very powerful uh, snippet of the amazing work that 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 you do. And and Janet, you're with us from Whitehorse. Uh, uh, we have you know Barbara's in Cold Lake. That some of the teams out in British Columbia. I'm in Ottawa. You're in Whitehorse. And maybe just before we uh, we get to, uh, I, I want to ask you about you know. Tell us about Gran and, and um, a little bit about his history. Where did it evolve from? But maybe just tell us a little bit about you. What's your background and how did you come to, uh, come to be involved with, with Gran? Well, thank you so much, Gregor, for inviting me to join you on this, uh, this webinar. It's a real opportunity for me to promote Gran and the work that we are doing. Uh, my background is as a Canadian diplomat for 30 years, um, working primarily in Asia and Africa and in the field of immigration and refugee affairs. Uh, so when I retired, um, my last assignment was in, in Tanzania as the Canadian ambassador to Tanzania. I knew I wanted to continue um, to do something impactful that would um, you know, relate to what I had seen on the ground in Africa in terms of the uh, older women, how they hold those African communities together with so little resources, with so little support. So the first thing I did in 2009 when I retired was to join the Grandmothers to Grandmothers campaign of the Stephen Lewis Foundation um, with many other wonderful uh, older women across Canada. And that organization primarily does fundraising um, and raises awareness for the community-based projects that Stephen Lewis Foundation is supporting in Africa. But a number of us wanted to do even more than that. We wanted to be part of the change that would improve the lives of these older women. And so uh, about 10 years ago, we formed our own civil society organization that is focused solely on advocacy. And as you saw in the video, advocating for the human rights of older women in the global south with a particular focus on Africa and really trying to move the needle on policy and programs and funding that will support and promote those human rights. Okay, interesting. Wow, that's that's a lot of work. And so you and so you have um you have your 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 membership is right across Canada, would you say? Yes. Yeah. Well, we are a virtual um okay. we are a virtual network 
And we do, we have members from coast to coast to coast. We like, once I moved to Whitehorse five years ago, we were able to add the third coast. Uh, <laughs> uh, and we do, we, we meet virtually um, pre-COVID. We would meet every two years, uh, gather together, um, a wonderful uh, opportunity to support each other. We, we used to call our, our gatherings were called Hello Friends. And we hope that we'll be able to resume that again in the near future. But we're pretty active work, meeting on a, a, a monthly basis to plan our campaigns, our advocacy campaigns, um, to work with our partners on specific uh, issues that we hope will make a difference in the lives of these older women. So what, like, what would you say, um, what, would, what are some of the critical issues that you guys are, are yeah. really focused on or what? Where are you yeah. putting your attention now? Yeah, one of our core issues has really been um, access to uh, health care. Um, it started, our first campaign was called the Canadian Access to Medicines Campaign, which was a bill that was in Parliament that would have really improved the access to antiretrovirals to uh, fight the HIV pandemic in Sub-Saharan Africa. And so we lobbied and, and marched and wrote letters and met with MPs. And unfortunately, we weren't successful uh, with our partners in having that legislation passed. But it certainly mobilized us and galvanized us to continue our work. And most recently, that work has seen some success. Um, uh, one of our campaigns most recently was to encourage Canada to make a significant contribution to the Global Fund to fight HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria. And uh, the fight against these communicable diseases had really taken a hit because of the COVID pandemic. And the Global Fund needed a significant increase in funding and Canada, in our view, needed to step up to the plate and do its fair share. And they did. Yesterday, our Prime Minister announced that Canada would be contributing 1.2 billion. So we're in celebration mode. We have been working with other civil society organizations um, in, in Canada uh, for the last year on uh, advocating with, uh, with the policymakers, the Prime Minister. Many of us have written letters, made telephone calls. So we're really excited about that. I guess the other area that has been a real focus for us in the last year has been the climate crisis. And we know that women produce 50% of the food in the world. And in Sub-Saharan Africa, that's closer to 80%. And they've been absolutely devastated uh, by the climate crisis, which of course is now a reality on the ground in Africa. So um, the types of things, again, we will do, you'll, um, find that tomorrow across Canada, grandmothers, grands will be marching with the young people from the Fridays for Futures uh, movement to raise uh, the profile of how this crisis is impacting the older women who produce the food for their families and for their communities. Hmm. Wow, that is just so, so inspiring. You know, we um, as you know, I, we had a, I had the opportunity uh, to really enjoy to share with uh, share with Grand some of our Help Age Canada's work uh, overseas and particularly in Africa. And and I think for anybody that that travels or has the the, the privilege to to go to Africa or or the Horn of Africa in particular is to is to witness the the absolute precarity of life. You know that that you know, life and death are, are a meal away, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in, in Somalia, for example, we're well, in that whole region, it's looking like they are going to announce it officially as a famine, which is not just a, which is not just a, a loose term to talk about people that are hungry, but it's an evaluated quantitative statement where the last famine in Somalia 20, 2011, I believe, it was over 250,000 people that died. Um, you know, refugee camps all through that area, it's Somalia, Sudan, Ethiopia, you know, their people report on the ground, you know, they're, they're lucky if they, a good day is if they have one meal yeah. for their whole family of rice, that's a good day. And uh, it's, they're coming up to the fourth rain season that is looking like, or fifth rather, there's where there will again not be enough rain. So this is, 
This affects all of the cattle, the, the reseeding for the future. It's a tremendous humanitarian crisis that we're involved in. And, you know, right there at the heart of, of all of these communities are our women and often our grandmothers because of HIV AIDS, because of the conflict, that it's often the grandmothers there on the ground that are caring for wide extended families, caring for everything from making sure everyone is fed, trying to find some source of income, holding together this family, and yet they still remain excluded from the decision-making, which is more of a, a, a and, they're, and they're at home designated to do the family chores as women and girls. Uh, and it, the cycle perpetuates itself, and yet the glue, the force that you witness when you're there are, are, are these older women that are holding together uh, everybody, the whole communities. Uh, it's an amazing thing to witness and experience. And I, you know, I'd love to hear you, you comment on that. And also to bridge that, you know, how does that also mirror our, our, our communities here in Canada? You know, although we have a, although we certainly have, you know, far much more padding and we're, uh, we're a, you know, a first world country, but we often face many of those same issues, including the rights of older people uh, and the way that older women provide such support and fabric to our Canadian society and the barriers that they face here back at home as well. So, ah, I know I blabbed there a, a, <laughs> for a long time, but uh, no. there's, a, Gregor, there's Africa you, and then there's here at home. So, <laughs> Gregor, you could be an ambassador for Grand because that is exactly what has inspired us. I mean, we are older women, Canadian women. We are grandmothers. We really feel an affinity for the grandmothers in the global south who are holding their communities together against all odds with very limited resources. And there is, I think, a real parallel. Um, obviously, most of us in the Grandmothers Advocacy Network were boomers. We've been social activists all our lives. Um, we really feel that we have a voice, we hope that we have a voice that can contribute and raise the profile, but we see that we need to do that for ourselves in Canada as older women. And you talk about the parallels. parallels. Um, I think a lot of the issues that we have identified and we've talked about just now also impact on older women in Canada. The difference, as you said, is we do have a social safety net as imperfect as it might, might be. But I would say one of the most direct parallels would be with Indigenous women in Canada. And I know there are a lot of grants, although devote uh, volunteer hours to grant, but they also devote volunteer hours to um, missing and murdered Indigenous women, so, you know, marching, we're coming up to the uh, National Day of uh, Truth and Reconciliation, and you'll see a lot of us out in our, in our orange t-shirts. The, the parallels are there, and I think that just um, ignites and, uh, our passion because we know it can be difficult in Canada for older women. Ageism, sexism, yeah. just being, we have on our website a, a study that we did called Older Women Count. I mean, the data does not take into consideration older women when they're doing medical studies or economic studies. It's like we fall off the map uh, once our reproductive lives are over. So I think that there are many parallels and uh, one of the um, benefits of our organization that I would like to highlight is it's a fabulous community. We have created a community, a virtual community of older women we have recognition on Parliament Hill. They know when the grannies are coming to advocate. They take our calls. Um, we hope that we've raised the visibility of the contribution that older women can make in Canada, as well as the contribution that a advocacy group like ourselves can make to some of these really life or death issues that you described, Gregor, um, in, in the global south, older women in the global south, the grandmothers and the children. So that's what keeps us going because it's been 10 years. We're all 10 years older. Uh, uh, we've learned to use Zoom uh, and a lot of other skills that we perhaps uh, didn't have when we first started this. But I just do like to do a shout out to all the wonderful women that I've been working with across Canada for the last 10 years. We support each other and we support the, uh, the 
the other organizations always working in partnership um, to imp uh, increase our impact. But it's a wonderful experience and um, we hope that, um, and we believe that we can make a difference. As older women, we can make a difference. I think that's just so amazing. You, you, you know, you could, you could be the ambassador for anti-ageism in Canada, you know, because all over the world, you know, uh, you know, even in the COVID-19 uh, response, as we were trying to develop data on, you know, what's happening with gender-based violence and what's happening amongst older people, and there's just no disaggregated data anywhere. Exactly. There's no information. It's almost like older people are, are invisible when it comes to evaluation. And uh, like you said, um, uh, you know, they just they, somehow they just fall off the map as if they're no longer there. And yet there they are, older people in Canada and all over the world, right at the very heart of community. And uh, I think, it, you know, Graham just sounds like what an amazing organization to engage with, to participate in, in really uh, advocating for that. But the very fact that the voice of advocacy is coming from the very um, people that you're advocating for is, is really exciting. How would somebody get involved? Like, what would that look like if, my, you know, my mom wanted to uh, say, get involved and uh, tell yes, us about that? Well, it's, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, you would just go to our website, which is grandmothersadvocacy.org. And there's a button the right chat. there. There's a button right there to sign up to get, it says, get involved. And once you give us uh, your email address, we begin to send you our monthly updates. We invite you to our meetings. We invite you to join us in our advocacy. And we know we also have um, a, a bit of a proverb of, of our own in Grand, and that's you do what you can when you can. Because we also recognize that older women like ourselves often have other commitments and it could be our own health or health of a family member that we are uh, supporting. Um, so it's a very um, inclusive and welcoming organization that allows you, if you are interested in a particular issue um, on which we are advocating to join in that advocacy, but if you're not able, then we understand and you step back and we appreciate your support in at least uh, reading what we what we are all about. We are self-funded. Um, so once a year, we all make a bit of a donation to our organization to keep it going. Um, but that also gives us the autonomy to choose our issues, choose our advocacy, choose our partners um, uh, in a way that we hope that we will have the most impact. Wonderful, fantastic. Well, I think that we may have a, a couple of questions here. Barb, uh, would, you, would you like to uh, have a question for Jan? Jump in here. I do, and I actually just uh, clicked on get uh, submit after I filled out the form to get involved because as a grandmother myself, this really touches me on so many levels. And it's just really interesting. I mean, a fabulous video and really interesting to hear um, what's involved and what you just mentioned that, you know, knowing that that um, many of us have a lot of different things going on, we can do what we can when we can. Um, and so I, I have a special interest in uh, many of the things that you're doing, but I also um, am interested in learning a little bit more about some of the connections. You've talked about ageism and you've talked about rights. Um, and so one of my questions is around the international or the UN convention mm -hmm. on the rights of older persons. And are, are there some specific things that you're, you're doing in relation to that? Well, we, we've certainly been following that and updating our members on the progress on, on the convention. Um, uh, may I use the shorthand crop? Um, we, there isn't a, advocating at the international level is pretty difficult, but we, we are working in, in partnership and we do use our voices and our letter writing capacity when there are call, um, calls out for action. So that is very much um, a part of our overarching type of advocacy. And then underneath that umbrella, we like to zoom in on a particular campaign, what, where we can bring some value added in. And often it's not, uh, we are not the experts in that field, but working with, for example, Doctors Without Borders 
or Results Canada or One Canada, what we can bring to those, <clears throat> those issues and that advocacy is the fact that we have a network right across Canada that, and we are not shy to call on our member of parliament to write a letter to the editor. And so we're a bit of an advocacy arm. We see that as our value added to some of these issues. And so if we do get closer to um, a convention, if we need to lobby the Canadian government to be more supportive of uh, and take a leadership role in, in such a convention, then I can see that that would be a, a place where uh, Gran, uh, if we agree, we work by consensus. If that's the issue of the year for us, we would, we would mount all our advocacy efforts towards that issue. That's really great to hear. And, and um, you may know that um, there will very soon be launched a Canadian coalition yes. Um, yes. to get Canada to sign on to the convention. So yes. uh, hopefully we'll be crossing paths. Yes, and I think there's a webinar, a webinar coming up this at the end of this uh, week that we've informed all our members and invited them to join. Super. I, uh, you know, a question that I had was, you know, for, for some of our viewers and participants in our, in our on aging program are, you know, part of the community based senior services sector in Canada. And I wonder if there might be opportunities if a local community wanted to have a speaker or have some kind of presentation to introduce their, their local community to the work that you're doing. Are, do you have those kinds of opportunities? Uh, um, we have in the past, it's uh, everything sort of got put on hold, but um, we also, anyone that is interested, um, we, could, we would certainly see if we have a grant in your neighborhood that could come and speak to it or speak virtually to it, or if it's virtual, um, uh, someone that has taken the leadership role in one of our issues could certainly join. It's very easy to get in touch with us. Um, it's, you know, info at grandmothersadvocacy.org. Um, and we would be happy to do that. I mean, our focus, of course, is um, overseas, is international. Um, and although we belong, in a sense, to the um, aging uh, sector, we also are part of the uh, international development sector. Uh, and so our partnerships there um, provide us with lots of opportunities to, to bring our issues to our Canadian politicians, to our local communities. But we do feel that one, a really important role for GRAN and for GRAN members is to raise that awareness um, in Canada of these issues that we can make a difference. There is, we know what we need to do. We just have to have the political will to do it. Awesome. I love that that phrase. If you if you think you can or you think you can't, you're both right. <laughs> yeah, right. got to do it. Well, well, thank you so much. It's just been such a thrill to to speak with you today, Janet, and to and to learn more about this amazing work that you're doing. And we'll be sure to be uh, engaging and promoting your work at, at Help Age Canada and I and healthy and healthy aging. We're uh, just delighted and so inspired that you're doing this work and it's it's many hands make light work as as your African proverb that you quoted um, if you want to get somewhere fast go alone if you want to get go go far go together so it's just such a privilege to get to 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 be a a, a comrade as we uh, do this work thank you Thank you so much. And thank you, Janet. And um, uh, I'm really a bit of a network nerd and I'm just really excited that the uh, Grandmother's Advocacy Network can join our network of, of core um, members who are all focused on supporting older adults to um, live well, live in place, age in place and, and uh, efforts in healthy aging. And so um, this uh, conversation will be, uh, has been recorded and will be posted on CORE Canada. And uh, in the very near future, we'll be also featuring um, the story of GRAN uh, in conjunction with that and promoting in our CORE Canada e-news. So it will live on. One thing I also would mention, um, you know, since we've been talking about ageism, is that the um, federal, provincial, territorial uh, ministers responsible for seniors has just launched a national consultation on ageism. And so there's a really great opportunity for people to um, 
uh, express their their um, their views, their concerns, their own experiences around ageism um, in an online survey, as well as participate in consultations that are taking place right across the country. So uh, that's also something that uh, hopefully um, we'll cross paths on. But thank you again, and um, we we uh, will look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. And and for me to get the um newsletters and and uh, information from gran now that i've signed up <laughs> thank you so right. much it's been a thank lot of fun thank you thanks thank you everyone just a reminder that we're uh, we're back here on on aging canadian conversations on october 13th that at, at noon est eastern standard time or 10 a.m if you're still in cold lake um we look forward to seeing you then i'm looking really looking forward to speaking to vanessa sparks from the toronto public library We'll be also featuring the Atwater Public Library in Montreal in our video segment, but that'll be a great chat. Uh, really looking forward to that. As we know, uh, public libraries provide amazing services and support to older people across Canada. So really looking forward to that conversation. Well, thanks everyone. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Be well. <laughs>